praise your name forever and ever. Amen. 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 Great is the Lord and worthy of all praise. His greatness is unfathomable. One generation shall commend your works to another and set forth your mighty deeds. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is the image of the invisible God. His is the supremacy over all created things. In Him everything in heaven and on earth was created. Not only things that are visible, but also the invisible orders of thrones and sovereignties and authorities. The whole universe has been created through Him and for Him. Shall we write? So therefore let us worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let us bow down before him his glory proclaim with gold of obedience and incense of holiness. Let us kneel and adore him. The Lord is his name. Continue this service of the inauguration of the North American Mission Diocese of the Methodist Church Ghana. In the blessed name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Begin 274. 274. Lord, we believe to us and ours the apostolic promise. Yeah. Yeah. Page 18. Page 18. <laughs>
We give thanks to God for the promise of His presence with us through our ages. This evening we also confess we have often lived as though Christ has never risen. And our lives are often like the radiance and the power and the joy of those who know the living Christ. Pray that with Paul, that we may know him and the power of his resurrection. That each of us dying unto sin may be alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So, Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and for whom no secrets are hid, we pray you to cleanse the thought of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Lord, hear our prayer, and let our cry come on. Almighty God, who has built your church upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Mercifully look upon your servants assembled together in your name, that we humbly calling upon you in simplicity of heart, we feel and know your grace and your visitation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord, hear our prayer and let our cry come. Almighty Father, God of the living, in whose hands are the spirits of just men made perfect. We give you thanks for the unseen company of faithful witnesses into whose labor we have entered and whose faith we now share. We pray, Lord, that you grant that we may so follow their good example that with them we may finally attain your everlasting kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated and we invite the praise and worship team to give us 15 minutes. 15 minutes. As we rejoice, <laughs> we adore God, we thank Him, we worship Him. The joy, the glory, the praise, the thanksgiving that is truly His.
and so we stretch for our heart towards them as a sign of praying for our church. That the Spirit of God will be upon our church. Um, looking at the theme that uh, we are discussing, uh, we discuss at this synod, uh, we want to proclaim the evangelical heritage of Methodism, uh, which is Christian witness uh, in public. And so we want to pray for the church that the Lord Himself lead us and guide us that we be able to complete what the Lord has given to us. Um, that the name of the Lord will be glorified here and beyond. Shall we please stand?
dear Christian friends, we have met here for a special purpose, and we need to know about this forward. So, we get ourselves in the readiness for this as we send the letters in 273. Come down, O Lord divine, seek thou the soul of mine.
this region. God bless you. Today is a special day in the life of the Methodist Church can in this area of the world. The members of the church we are largely informed have endeavored over the years to strengthen and enrich their, their worship life and their service to the community. Ministers, the ministers and leaders have faithfully nurtured those who have shown the desire to know Christ. And the members are keenly aware of their financial responsibilities towards the church. It has been felt not as a matter of pride, but in thankfulness to God that the progress which has been made deserves special recognition in the form of bringing together the circus in this area into a new mission in the houses. Conference at its representative session in August 2016 agreed to the creation of the new North America Mission Diocese, which we are inaugurating today. We have assembled today at the solemn service in order to inaugurate the new Mission Diocese. Pray especially for the leadership and to offer the Diocese and its leadership to God. Thus, setting the divine seal on the houses and its leadership. Beside itself, on behalf of the conference, I accordingly invite you to inaugurate the new North American Mission Houses and to offer special prayers for the leaders of these new mission houses. Of any number of sites or missions 
in any country outside Ghana with such government and such organization in such manner as the conference shall determine. The request for the North American mission to be granted the diocesan status was brought before the 9th Biennial and 47th Conference of the Methodist Church Ghana meeting in Takwa and was also ratified yesterday at our Synod unanimously. Hallelujah! Amen. In the motion, arguing that we be elevated to a mission diocesan status, we said as follows, that the status would empower our churches to advance God's mission among and beyond Ghanaians and Methodists in both the USA and Canada. That the new status will enable our churches to formally engage other ecumenical bodies for the advancement of God's mission in North America and in Ghana. And the motion said this, which is, I believe, the most important thing, which is that there is a potential of human and financial resources that are available within the mission so that we can effectively function as the diocese. Hallelujah. Amen. We give thanks to God that we are meeting in this building, which used to be the sanctuary of many, many saints years ago. But in God's own providence, today this building belongs not only to the UCC, but also to the Methodist Church Ghana and to those that call our people. Hallelujah. Amen. God is doing so many new things in the world. At one point in 1986, a student of Trinity College got sick. And the church said there was no medical facility to take care of him, so he was permitted to go to the United States to have medical treatment. It was sickness that brought him to the United States. Osofu Jacob Owusu Safu came to the United States because of sickness. And the God of Providence, the God of Mission, had another mission for him when he came here. So even though he was here to treat his eye, God's mission for him was beyond giving his eye. Hallelujah. Amen. Sometimes we don't see how God works. So God brought Papa Osafu to New York, and Papa Osafu started. Papa Jacob Osafu started gathering Ghanaians together. He would go from one funeral to another, one outdoor to another. Get about the idea. Telling people that the people called Methodists have a place they can meet, they can come together. They had three objectives. They wanted to worship the language and the style unique to Ghanaian Methodists. They wanted to offer assistance to one another in times of difficulty. But they also wanted to offer support to the Mother Church in Ghana. Let me just pause and then we just ask Papa Jacob, please stand. Let's give thanks to God. Let's give glory to God. Church of 
uh, the United States, we have had a memorandum of understanding uh, of cooperation, of cooperation with the United Church of Canada. And I'm glad to say that the Reverend Michael Blair is here representing the United Church of Canada. He is so kind of to stand up. So our mission is a collection of individual societies. But the idea, the impetus to come together as a connection, as a mission, that came through our dear brother, the very Reverend Kofi Bart He called together all the ministers in the year 1998, this is on page 30, and the ministers said they wanted to provide pastoral care and chaplaincy for Ghanaian Methodists. They wanted to explore building a North American district at that time of the Methodist Church Ghana. The first person to be elected, the chairman, was Dr. Reverend Dr. John Bonfo, and later on, very Reverend Kofi Bakmati was also elected as the chairman. Let's, let's put our hands together for the first Thank you very much. Thank you very much. In the course of the years, the following have served in various offices. Dr. John Bonfo, uh, Osofu Kofi Bakmati, uh, we've also had Bishop Asari, and then we also have Professor Joseph Jose. We have uh, as treasurers, we have had Victor Joel Janssen, and also brother Professor Nathan Austin. Uh, could you all stand up, please, uh, professors, and uh, uh, could you all stand up? Let's put our hands together for the rest of us. Yeah. Presiding said, truth be told, it has not always been smooth sailing.
GISs has been under the administration of a transitional team. That transitional team has been led by very Reverend Professor Joseph Jose, our brother Kudrajiman as Chairman of the Lay Movement Council, myself as Mission Secretary, the very Reverend Thomas Atakusa, who will not be with us, and brother Professor Nathan Austin. If you stand up please, then the, the transitional team, the leadership of the mission now, let's let's put our hands together for us. We say to the glory of God that it is under the leadership of this transitional team that we have achieved what we are doing today. Hallelujah. As in that second city, yes, my name. In conclusion, sir, going back to our history, you all remember when Ghana got independence, first sub Saharan country to be independent and to be independent in Africa. Our first president, Kwame Kuma, said the independence of Ghana is what? Meaningless. Unless it is linked up with the total liberation of Africa. The first president of the Conference of Methodist Church, Ghana, Park Grant, said something similar. He said, a church is not great because it is autonomous. A church is great when it makes disciples. A church is not great because it is a mission diocese. A church is great when it makes disciples. God has not called us to be merely a mission or a diocese. God has called us to be those who make disciples. That is why we are so excited that this year's team is as if God chose that team for us in the mission diocese in North America. That we will not only be those that are bringing Ghanaians and Methodists together in churches, but we will go beyond that. We will see ourselves as those that God has planted in this part of the world as missionaries. And we will help revive the churches that are here. We will bring revival. We will revitalize the churches. And we will seek to make disciples of all nations. Our father in the faith, John Wesley, when he was asked, Are you afraid that the people called Methodists will cease to exist as a denomination? He said, I'm not afraid of that. That is not what bothers me at all. What I'm afraid of is that they will continue to exist, but they will not have the spiritual power that they need to do the work of God. So as we inaugurate the mission, our prayer is that we are not just inaugurating a mission diocese, but we are asking the Holy Spirit to grant us His power that we will be those that make disciples of all nations. They who tread the path of the
of Christ. I'm addressing those people who are still in front of you. So please pick up your order and follow as I do. That it be an appropriate response to see it. Thank <laughs> you.